Hello, and welcome to the Multi-Chamber Bag Parental Nutrition video series. My name is Andrew Mays, and I'm a clinical pharmacy specialist in nutrition support at the University of Mississippi Medical Center and a clinical assistant professor for the University of Mississippi School of Pharmacy. I'll be presenting part one of this video series on multi-chamber bag parental nutrition. Aspen does not endorse any one product over another that may be seen in this presentation. What are multi-chamber bag parental nutrition products? Aspen defines multi-chamber bag parental nutrition as a standardized commercially available parental nutrition product that is available from a manufacturer. For example, multi-chamber bags with concentrated amino acids plus concentrated dextrose with or without lipid injectable emulsions or with or without electrolytes. These products may require fewer sterile compounding steps before administration when compared with traditional parental nutrition these products are not pre-mixed. Therefore, we will be avoiding the term pre-mixed when referring to these products as appropriate mixing and sterile preparation is required. We will be referring to these products as MCB PN for the rest of the video series. In the United States, there are two manufacturers of MCB PN. One is a two-chamber product with amino acids and dextrose, and the other is a three-chamber product with amino acids, dextrose, and lipid intravenous emulsion. We will talk about these products further. This three-chamber bag product contains concentrated dextrose, amino acids with electrolytes, and lipid intravenous emulsion, all sealed within separate chambers. To prepare the bag for administration, the seals are broken by rolling the bag to break the seals and then mixed by inverting the bag several times to ensure a homogeneous mixture. Then components such as multivitamins and trace elements are added through the additive port and then mixed by inverting the bag again a few times to ensure a homogeneous mixture in the end. A number of varieties of multi-chamber PN are available in the United States. A two-chamber MCB PN product is available with and without electrolytes. They come in one and two liter bags with amino acid content ranging from 2.75% to 5% and dextrose content ranging from 5% to 25%. The two-chamber product with the 2.75% amino acid and 5% dextrose concentrations can be administered peripherally. Remember, two-chamber MCBPN without lipid intravenous emulsions can be used in pediatric patients. This is due to compatibility concerns and inappropriate doses of ILE with three-chamber MCBPN. The two-chamber MCBPN does not contain the conditionally essential amounts of cysteine and taurine required, so these should be added if possible. A three-chamber MCBPN product is available with electrolytes only. These come in different volumes based on the macronutrient content. There is both a central PN formulation and peripheral PN formulation. The central PN products have between 34 and 85 grams of protein per bag, 100 and 250 grams of dextrose per bag, and 400 to 100 grams of lipids per bag. The peripheral products have between 34 and 57 grams of amino acids per bag, 97 to 162 grams of dextrose per bag, and 51 to 85 grams of lipids per bag. In August of 2011, a survey was performed in the United States that looked at all aspects of the PN use process. The analysis of this survey was published by Balada and colleagues in JPEN in March of 2013. There were 895 respondents, representative of various healthcare disciplines, dietitians, nurses, pharmacists, and physicians. 89% of respondents were hospital practitioners, with 44% of those from academic institutions. 50% of the respondents reported average daily number of PNs to be 0 to 5 PNs per day. 21% of respondents reported using MCBPN alone in their institution while 7% of respondents reported using both compounded and MCBPN products in their institution. Also of note, respondents with a patient sentence of less than 200 patients per day or with less than or equal to 5 PNs per day had a higher utilization rate of MCBPN. It is very likely that over the past few years, due to electrolyte and amino acid component shortages, the usage of these products has increased. With more recent data collected in these ASHP publications, you can see that the use of these products has continued to increase. There was an 8.8% increase in the utilization of MCBPN from 2011 to 2017. The impact of continuing macronutrient and electrolyte shortages 
have forced institutions to decide if MCBPN will meet the needs of their patient populations and have required nutrition support clinicians to make sure that these products will meet the needs of their patients that they serve. There are some advantages and disadvantages of MCBPN. Advantages of MCBPN could be reduced risk of prescribing and compounding errors, reduced workload on the Department of Pharmacy due to decreased compounding time, reduced infection rates due to decreased bag manipulation, an ability to utilize during times of macro or micronutrient shortages, and a comparable nutrition efficacy. Disadvantages of MCBPN could be limited formulations that may not meet patient-specific needs for protein or electrolytes, volume restrictions related to wasting bags due to only needing part of a full MCBPN or having to use multiple bags of MCBPN per day to meet patient needs, requiring two order systems of PN if utilizing traditional compounded PN and MCBPN in the same institution, and remember, MCBPN still needs mixing and requires addition of further additives if indicated. A 2017 review by Alfonso and colleagues looked at clinical, ergonomic, and economic outcomes with MCBPN. This review showed advantages of fewer infectious complications, shorter length of hospitalization, and reduced time and labor costs. Collective evidence showed cost benefits when compared to compounded PN secondary to decreased production and labor costs. The largest cost benefits were shown more in studies evaluating total hospitalization costs. These benefits are related to reduced bloodstream infections and decreased length of hospitalization. This data could be limited by some of the study's retrospective nature and utilization of a single, large U.S. hospital database. Of note, safety benefits are reduced when these products are manipulated under non-aseptic conditions, especially when on nursing wards. How can you decide to utilize MCBPN in your institution? Based on data from surveys in the United States, utilization of MCBPN is increasing. However, nutrition support clinicians must be at the head of the table when an institution is deciding to use MCBPN. Many things must be taken into consideration when coming to a conclusion on the utilization of MCBPN. Ask yourself some of these questions. Will MCBPN help workflow, decrease errors, and decrease labor and product costs? So, review your daily number of PNs in patient census. Will MCBPN meet the caloric needs of your patients? Could MCBPN be used in certain patient populations within your institutions? Review patient populations that require PN in your institution. Do your pa patients require fluid restriction because of cardiac or renal failure? Do your patients require large amounts of protein due to critical illness, high output fistulas, or other sources of protein loss? Do your patients have electrolyte derangements that will require large amounts of electrolyte supplementation? The addition of additional electrolytes and other components is dependent on manufacturer recommendations and should be done by institutions along with manufacturer guidelines. The slide in front of you has a decision tree to help you decide to, if you would like to use MCBPN in your institution. When starting a new PN, ask yourself these questions. Do you anticipate PN length of therapy less than 14 days, maybe due to prolonged MPO, pancreatitis, or small bowel obstruction with a planned intervention? If no, move to traditional compounded PN. If yes, ask yourself the next question. Does the patient have electrolyte derangements, hyper or hypokalemia, hyper or hypophosphatemia, or hypomagnesemia? If yes, then move toward traditional compounded PN if no, move to the next question. Does the patient have conditions that would waste electrolytes, diarrhea, high output fistulas or ostomies, or maybe medications such as amphotericin B or cisplatin? If yes, use traditional compounded PN. If no, move to the next question. Does the patient need volume restriction from CHF, ascites, or edema? If yes, use traditional compounded PN. If no, move to the next question. Does your patient have acute or chronic renal failure, CRRT, intermittent hemodialysis, or EGFR less than 30? If yes, then use traditional compounded PN. If no, consider using MCBPN. In summary, MCBPN use in the United States seems to be growing. MCBPN can be safer, less expensive, and useful during times of shortage. MCBPN has limitations and is not for all patients. 
Each institution should evaluate whether to use this type of PN. Here's a slide of references that you can look further into this information that we discussed during the slideshow. I would like to acknowledge that this is an educational offering provided to you by Aspen, which was supported by an educational grant provided by Fresenius Covey.